Okay, just one thing I want to mention about that, about cutting and pasting. And that is, I'm going to go into edit. I can just say paste and it'll paste it in. This was a small table. Sometimes it's a very complicated table. You'll find it extends out past your borders and so on and so forth. It's difficult to manage. So in that case, sometimes you may want to say paste special. And what you can do is, is that you can say paste it in as a picture instead of as text or a box. So I'm going to click that in. And when it's pasted in that way, it'll always fit. As Word will squeeze it in. And if you need to, you can you can easily like uh, uh, shrink it or make it wider and so on and so forth with uh, handling the whole table as, as one thing. So you may find that a little easier to work with when you ha when you have to do that. Okay, and I just want to go back to uh, uh, now. The second part of it is kind of a special exercise where. Um, uh, where it's really it's just it's just for extra bonus points and stuff like that. And what I'm asking you to do there is uh, 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 take uh, uh, the blood pressure data, right? Uh, where it's like a very where it's only two groups. Now normally you wouldn't use analysis of variance for two groups. You would only use analysis of variance for one group for uh, 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 when you have three or more groups. Right. If you if you uh, uh, were comparing two groups, means you would use the t test, independence paired, depending on what they are. So so in this case, I'm asking you to to uh, uh, do this both using the analysis variance and t test and compare your results. The only thing you gotta be a little bit careful about is when you do a t test. For instance, analyze, compare means, independent samples, t test. I'm gonna tell it to um, uh, do um, 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 uh, uh, I can't do this. No, there's no, there's no. Uh, I need the other data set. Let me get the other data set. Uh, okay, there's my other data set. I got more than one open at the same time here. Um, 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 analyze, compare means, independent samples, t test, and my groups are going to be education, right? And my cholesterol is going to be. Uh, uh, total cholesterol. See, now the thing is, is that now it needs to know how to define these groups. I told it that I want to compare two groups. Now, education has three groups, one, two, and three, right? Value one, two, and three. It doesn't know which two I want to compare. It can only compare two. So I got to go in here and tell it I want to compare, say, one and three, and it'll compare high school versus college graduates and do a t-test. Right? And it does the t-test for me. That's why, and it always does that. Even when there's only two groups, you would think it would figure it out that there's only two groups. So it doesn't need to be told which two to compare, but it does. Oh, the assignment said use bound for me. Good, thank you. All right, let me back up here and see what I missed so far in, in comments. Uh, assignment number seven, I know. It's my no, an alternative. Uh, first time in several acceptable. Yep, I think that's my uh, uh, Yes, Bonfroni. Yes, Bonfroni something. Yes, I agree. I don't know who he is. Uh, I, maybe one of these days I'll meet him. Can you give me an idea of what calculations are achieving? Does it support relationship between age and flu vaccine? Yeah. What calculation is it? age and flu vaccine and self reported health status and vaccine? Okay, let's talk about the uh, the uh, data set. Okay, so we're looking at flu vaccine. Uh, let me see if I can't find that data set. Let me close all this junk. Uh, nope. Let me get rid of this. Let me get this stuff away. Nope. I meant yes. Okay, I don't mind closing this. Nope. Uh, no. Okay, let me see if I can. Let me go to Blackboard and find that data set. Okay, okay, okay. I think it might be. I might have it here already on my desktop. Let me see. Okay, here we go. Uh, actually, 
Okay. I think we're using this one, the simplified one. Am I right about that, guys? That's what uh, uh, Professor Waldron suggested, using the simplified one. That's got a lot few uh, 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 variables in it. It's a lot more manageable rather than the full one, which was, I don't know, 50 or 100 variables. Okay, so let me wait for this to open and see what it looks like. Okay, so let's see what we have here. We have uh, flu vaccine, yes or no. That's a categorical variable. We have uh, uh, insured. Let me, I want to make this a little wider here. Okay, insured gateway 12, yes or no, that's categorical. General health, self-described general health, that's categorical. Uh, gender, that's categorical. Uh, uh, demographic, um, that is, looks like numerical. Um, uh, U.S. born, that's category, right? Uh, children, that's a number. It could be a number or category, depending on how you look at it. But it, it's it, it's a number for our purposes. It's a number because it's a number of children. Uh, actually, it's gonna got to be categorical because they use the value none rather than. Uh, I'm gonna have to look in there. But, uh, I actually need. These values are, let me get rid of that view, turn that off. Yeah, zero, zero, one, two. Well, actually, none is one, I guess. Yeah, none is one. Okay, well, then it's categories. Uh, strata is, let's see, I guess this is neighborhood and so on and so forth. In fact, we, see how these, these variable names make a struggle, right? Like, what, what do they mean, you know, uh, a strata? And what do they mean, uh, 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 insured gateway? Well, one of the things that we can do is we can go back to our variable view. And in our variable view, although the variable name can be a little bit hard to interpret, for instance, insured gateway, they give, it's possible to put in a label that's much more detailed. For instance, in this case, up, oh, I didn't mean to. I want to just expand this part. Okay, so for instance, uh, insured gateway, that means insured created from the gateway question uh, wording different, blah, 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 before, after. That's just insured or uninsured. That's all that means. Okay, if I click in here, one means yes, they're insured. Two means no, they're not insured. Okay, so how am I going to analyze all this interesting data? Well, first of all, most of this data is categorical, right? Look, they, they, there's a value here. There's values filled in here. The only one that doesn't have values filled in is what is your age? That's a numerical variable. Right, all the and and the uh, 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 survey weight. Uh, I'm gonna have to look up what that is. I don't remember. Um, uh, uh, the um, uh, oh, strata and survey strata and uh, survey weight are correction. I think st uh, uh, statistical corrections for the data. I, I have to take a look at that later on and see if that's something we really want to play with. Um, so most of these are categorical variables. One of them is a numerical variable, that's age. So, for instance, if I wanted to examine uh, 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 if there's a difference in the average age, remember if we're numerical, I'm looking at just at age right now, right? Uh, uh, funniest, that's, uh, it, it's uh, uh, demographic one. Uh, is age, right? That's really not very descriptive. So that's why it's important as, for us to see that label. Uh, let's say I want to I want to work with age, right? That's a numerical variable. I'm going to find means. So I'm going to compare different groups. If I wanted to see if the average age in this group, in, in this survey, was different for males and females, I would do a t-test, right? Because there's two categories for the categorical variable mean uh, a male and female, and we could calculate the average 
male and female weight. Like, for instance, I want to do that right now. Descriptive statistics, compare, compare means, independent samples. I would pu pu put uh, 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 a DMOG1 or the age. Uh, where is it? Uh, 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 uh. What is your age? Question seven, what is your age? Uh, into my test variable and my grouping variable, I would put sex or gender, right? And I could calculate, I'd have to define the groups, which was, I think, ones and twos. If you get it wrong, it'll kick it back, tell you you couldn't do it. Well, I got it right. So, so is there, there is a significant difference in the age between males and females, right? In this study, it happens that females are generally older than males are. Uh, in the study. The male population, female population is older than the male population. If it's random sample, that would suggest to you that in the general population, there's uh, the female population is older, which wouldn't be that unusual, would it? Okay, so I'm going to go on to, uh, now if I wanted to, to compare uh, age for uh, something that has more than two groups. Okay, oh, here, here we go. Um, here's a group, here's a variable, general health report, and there are five categories. Maybe we want to see if, if there's a difference in the way that people at different ages would report their health status. Okay, so we got a categorical variable with five values, and we have a, uh, 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 a, uh, a numerical variable age sounds like a perfect place for me to use analysis of variance, right? Because I got, I compare five means. I compare the mean age in each of those five groups. The, uh, what's the average age for somebody who reported their, their uh, uh, health status as poor versus uh, good versus uh, very good. Okay. So I'm going to go into compare means one way analysis of variance and in my dependence list, again, it's going to be the numerical variable, which is the age. What is your age? And okay, my factor this time is going to be, let's see, what can I get? My Where's my factor? My factor is uh, self-reported health status. Now, we're going to cross my fingers, hoping that there's going to be enough values in each one of these uh, 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 boxes. And I'm going to say... Um, 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 and uh, one the analysis of variance and say, okay. Okay. And look, there is a significant, significant difference between these groups. Our null hypothesis would be there's no significant difference between the, uh, 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 and, uh, the average age of people uh, uh, that self-reported self health status. And uh, alternatively, there is a difference. There is a, 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 a association between self-reported health status and age. Um, so uh, in this case, it looks like it's significant. So let's see. Let's see uh, if I want to go back and do my uh, uh, post hoc test, compare means, one way analysis variance. Uh, I'm going to go in post hoc. I'll use my Ferroni for the hell of it. Say OK.
Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I see I see your comments there. I'm not complete, completely oblivious. Uh, I hope I didn't get too far. Yeah, you're right. I must have been clicking around in it. Little, uh, you can't see it, but there's a little green button up there for my uh, for my audio. Um, so at any rate, um, we can see that there's a significant difference. What would have been very useful for me to do, even before I did this, was to do the descriptive statistics. Analyze descriptive statistics. I'm going to go to explore. Okay, and I'm going to say, Show me the means for uh, the average ages by self-reported health status. I'm going to click OK. okay. You could also do frequencies as well. right? And let's take a look at this and see what this looks like. Okay, the average age for someone that reports their health status is excellent is 47 years old. Very good, 49. Good, 51. Fair, 58. And poor, 63. Right? So the average age for people that are reporting their, their uh, and look how, look how consistent it is. As people get older, they tend to report their health status as worse than, when, than the younger group. Okay? So that really kind of suggests we're going to get some interesting results here. Right? So, so I would have probably been well served to do this part first and then go to my analysis of variance and my post hoc tests. So e there's a significant difference between every one of these groups, between excellent and poor, ex in terms of the average age, excellent and fair, excellent and good, and ex even excellent and very good. There, it's a lot closer, but there's still a significant difference. Right? So that's a pretty interesting finding, actually. And these charts... Notice that the uh, stem and leaf charts give you an idea whether or not the data is normally distributed. I could have also just asked it on, when I did my descriptive statistics. I could have asked it to do histograms for each group. And it'll do histograms and box plots. Right? Box plots, uh, not, notice how the, the median goes up consistently. There's a lot of variability, but since it's a very large sample set, despite all this variability, we could find a significant difference. Here's our histograms. A little bit skewed, right, towards the older group. That's probably got a lot to do with the population. Probably all these groups are going to be skewed a little bit that way because um, uh, 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 maybe the entire population is, oh, now this group is health, health uh, uh, group, uh, low is skewed towards the lower end, right? So uh, uh, you have some younger people, uh, 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 more younger people than you would have expected reporting poor, poor health status, uh, maybe because they have some specific condition or something like that, uh, but that's a little bit out of the ordinary. Normally, as you go into the uh, better ones, uh, uh, it's more unusual to have somebody that's higher, so it's skewed to the left, right? Okay, so, uh, but they're generally fairly normally distributed, right? They're a little bit of skewing, but they're generally normally distri distributed. So you might want to discuss that if you were doing this. But, of course, you've got many options here, right? We just looked at one of these options. You could compare age to uh, 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 whether or not you're insured, right? Whether or not the average age for someone that's insured is different than the average age for someone that's not insured. Now, you use a t-test for that because there are only two variables. Uh, you could uh, determine whether or not uh, someone who, uh, whether or not general health status is different for, uh, is associated with whether or not you're insured, right? Well, in that case, you got two variables. You got both of these are categorical variables, right? So uh, you have two categories for insured or not insured, and five categories for general health. So that would be a chi-square test or a uh, relative, a, or uh, uh, actually a chi-square test, and it would be a two by five uh, 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 cross tab or a contingency table, right, that you would be generating out of that. So you'd have expect, observed values, expected values, and you'd be able to calculate various risks and risk ratios and so on and so forth and look at that that way. You have 
gender and um, um, so we did gender and age. You could have health insurance and age you, if you wanted to stick with the t tests or or analysis of variance. You could have um, uh, likelihood of having children uh, versus uh, uh, demographic uh, versus age. Uh, um, uh, you could have uh, self-reported health status uh, versus uh, whether you're U.S. born or not, uh, right? So we have categorical and categorical, right? This has um, uh, uh, six, uh, five categories, and a U.S. born or not has two categories. That's another two by five table that you could use chi-square uh, risks, odds ratios, and so on and so forth for. Um, did I say ration? SPSS does not calculate risk ratio for tables larger uh, than two by two. Um, yeah, I guess I guess it just doesn't make any sense to do it. It's just uh, I, because the comparisons are not as clear as they are on a two by two table. So I would just sh stick with chi square, unless you want to examine one variable versus another variable. One way you can get around that is to recategorize the variables. Like in other words, if you wanted to compare people reporting excellent health to poor health um, 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 uh, uh, by gender, right? You can you could uh, just recategorize um, uh, uh, general health into instead of five groups into two groups. For instance, you might put fair and poor, make that number one, and good. Uh, uh, good, uh, very good and excellent category number two. So you would have, you'd be able to find an odds ratio or relative risk for reporting poor health versus good health rather than in all the different categories for, uh, uh, for males or females, for instance. So you could, and in, in some cases you could also just, if you just want to look at one category, transform it into a new variable that only has that one category, only has poor one and uh, excellent five and none of the other numbers in it. Uh, 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 so that's a you know way to deal with it. But you can see it gets so complicated that chances are there's so many different ways to do it that uh, SPSS probably wouldn't bother with that in that, in that uh, single analysis of variance calculation or I mean chi-square calculation. Okay. Um, 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 okay. So, uh, so we got number five, homework number five, homework number six, number seven. Let me see what else we got here. So if I can go back here. So um, I don't know if we've gotten any information back yet on the size of the uh, boards that we're going to use to tack this up and stuff like that. But it should be pretty interesting. We have a lot of different ways to uh, uh, that we're going to be able to examine this this data. Are any of you using a data set different than the ones that we offered, like something that you dug up on your own or anything like that? Anybody getting that adventurous? I know somebody was looking at uh, 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 data that uh, we tracked down that compared uh, arsenic levels with uh, uh, well depths in, uh, in India. And that's of interest because to some people because, you know, some of the EAOHS majors, that's relative to what they're doing. You may also have some stuff in your field of work or maybe some other course that you're working with. A little late now, I know, but uh, is there a way to exclude a variable? Uh, if so, if five variables you want to recode into two variables, but exclude one group. Yeah, all you have to do is ignore that. For instance, uh, transform. Um, uh, uh, there's actually probably a way to do that in the actual calculation. Um, and one of the options, I don't know where that might be though. Cross tabs, because usually I wouldn't bother doing it that way. Uh, let me just see if I see something in options here. Unstandardized statistics. Yeah, I don't see it in their formatting. Nope, I don't see. I don't see it in the actual calculation. Yeah, but for instance, let's say I want to transform. I'm going to take the one we just looked at, general health. Transform, recode into different variables. Um, uh, general health, that was number, uh, where is that? Self-reported general health. Okay, and um, uh, I'm going to give it a new variable name. Uh, uh, general health. 
reduced. Okay, and uh, uh, two categories. Uh, label as well. And I can take the old value. So if the old value is one, I can say uh, make the new value one. If the old value is five, make the new value two. I could actually just leave it at five also. And since that's all I'm doing, when I go ahead and change this, and I go ahead and tell it to uh, say okay, it's going to ignore all the other values. It's only going to copy those over. So now if I look at this, all I've got is one, one, ones and twos. And when I do an analysis here, for instance, if I want to uh, uh, do, I'm going to look at the frequency, uh, analyze the scripted frequency for this new variable that we created. It ignores all the others anyway, right? It just says uh, ones and twos uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, and it says that there's 75 are missing, you know, like uh, uh, 6,609 values are missing. But when you do an actual calculation, analyze, I'm going to do uh, a cross tab. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, let's see. Cross tabs. Whoops. Did it come up? Am I on cross tabs? Yes. Uh, if I use this, let's see. What was that? There was general health. Uh, I'm going to put that in the columns. And I'm going to put uh, uh, gender in the rows as the exposure. And I'm going to calculate chi square. And I'm going to have it tell me the expected and the observed values. Okay, and when I do this, it ignores the missing values. It just goes ahead and does the calculation. And it happens, it happens that we found that there's a significant difference between uh, uh, males and females, the rate at which that they would report uh, 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 poor versus Good health, the rate at which they report poor versus good, uh, good poor versus excellent health status. I I don't know. I lost kind of lost track of the uh, <laughs> yeah that, that data set's adventurous enough. Yeah, I guess uh, uh, I lost track of of which one was which, whether this was good or poor or whatever. But you can see that uh, uh, I'm going to go back and analyze uh, cross tabs, scripts of cross tabs. I'm going to put in the percentages by rows and I'll knock out the expected values. Okay. Okay. So the percentage, if you were only looking at, at males who reported um, uh, good, poor versus excellent health, there's eight, 861 males that reported either poor or excellent health. Uh, the risk of reporting, uh, that must be good. Risk of reporting good health is 78%. For females, risk of reporting good health is 66%. So it looks like females are uh, uh, less likely to report their health status as, as excellent than males are in this population. If you're just looking at the ones that report good or poor, uh, excellent or poor, for whatever that means. You know, but I mean, that's the, the answer to the question, that's the way that you might exclude some variables. It's just simply when you transform it, just don't copy it over. Okie doke. So I'm hoping you guys had a decent time this semester. You learned a little bit of statistics and uh, that uh, 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 we were some help in getting some of the concepts across and stuff like that. Uh, I know for a lot of you guys, it's been a while since you've taken a statistical course. And uh, uh, certainly it's uh, uh, maybe about a while uh, since some of you have even taken a math course at all. Uh, but hopefully this has helped a little bit. All right. So I'm going to uh, uh, close things out. And um, uh, if you have more questions, I'm going to try and get, I'm going to be grading as many of the homeworks as I can catch up with and so on and so forth, giving you some feedback. Uh, you can still in six and seven, you can still go back and make uh, and resubmit things if you want to push a grade up or something like that. Um, and if you email me that you had a particular problem with a homework previously, maybe I can make some sort of accommodation for you. I can't promise you that I can grade it the same way 
Uh, I could if it was submitted on time and stuff like that, but maybe I can make some sort of accommodation.